Here's another important video from the Personal Defense Network. Once we've decided how we're going to carry our firearm inside of the vehicle, of course we want to practice deploying that firearm from that method of carry. Now, if we've decided that it's not worth it to change anything from the way we normally carry a firearm, we don't spend that much time in the car, we're going to carry it that 5 o'clock position or the 4 o'clock position outside the waistband, just like we normally would with a jacket or concealment garment in a public space. We want to practice deploying that firearm from inside the vehicle so we know what it's going to be like. We have some muscle memory, if you will. We have a rut in the road that lets us know how to do it efficiently. We practiced it. Now, of course, there's no reason to practice with a live fire firearm. We could do this with a plastic gun. We could do this with an unloaded firearm. Or we could go to the range and actually do this live fire. For now, we've got an unloaded firearm. We're just going to go through the motions. Let's assume that I was trapped inside of a stopping area, parking lot, whatever it was. I couldn't move my vehicle. My vehicle's been disabled, whatever the situation is. And I recognize that I have a threat just outside of my passenger door. Maybe it's someone coming towards the car. Maybe it's somebody banging on the window with some kind of a weapon, a uh, stick, a crowbar, uh, you know, tire iron, something where they're trying to hurt me. At this point, I've recognized that I may need my firearm or I do need my firearm. Carrying in that 4 o'clock or 5 o'clock position, A, isn't very comfortable, and B, isn't very convenient. When I actually have to reach down now, push my body up out of the seat, get around the seat belt, in this case, disengage a thumb brake, and then tilt the firearm up and forward, actually away from the direction that I want to go. Of course, I want the gun pointed this direction towards the bad guy, but I've got to cant it this way, pointing it backwards, getting the firearm out past my body, and then coming in close, again, parallel with my thigh is how I like to cross the body. That way I'm not covering myself, orient towards the threat, and in this case, shoot from a retention position. Now, what do I need to do with my offhand while this is going on? Obviously, I need to keep it out of the way. I need to keep it below the line of travel of the muzzle as I come across my body, and certainly below and out of the way as I put that magazine well tucked in against my body, my firing hand thumb tucked in against my body, and then touch press. This is going to keep the slide away from my body, keep the firearm oriented in that general direction to get that combat accurate hit on the person who's attacking me from the driver's side. Now at this point, we're probably not going to reholster, especially if we're carrying in that 4 or 5 o'clock position. I'm going to stay in the ready position, I'm going to get rid of my seatbelt, and then I'm going to exit the vehicle, or maybe now the situation has changed and I'm able to drive away. I may need to put the firearm into my weak hand, keep it in the ready position while I drive, again, being careful and sure to stay outside of the range of that muzzle, keep the muzzle up above my thighs, keep it parallel with my thighs so that I'm not covering myself with a firearm during a dynamic critical incident. Deploying from the 4 or 5 o'clock position, may be great, easy, comfortable on the range and walking around, but it's not the smoothest and not the fastest when we're in a seated position inside of a car. One of the most convenient ways to present while seated inside of a vehicle is obviously going to be from a cross draw holster. Now we've looked at the way the cross draw holster works. I've actually got one on now. If I were to recognize a threat outside of this car, maybe the door was open and I was getting out, getting ready to leave the vehicle, or of course if the door was closed and I were trapped again, couldn't move from the vehicle, recognized a threat, I would reach down to the firearm, of course, releasing the strap, releasing any retention device. At this point, pulling the firearm up and keeping my offhand up above the muzzle, above where I believe the muzzle to be as I come up into that ready position and then that good shooting position, magazine well tucked against my body, strong hand thumb tucked against my body, and then touch press to defend myself from someone coming in from that driver's side. Now, if the threat were over on the passenger side or maybe even inside the vehicle, maybe out in front of me, that presentation would be even simpler because I wouldn't have to worry as much about this arm. I would simply come up against my body, parallel with the thigh, into the ready position. At this point, I could defend myself from in front. I could take the firearm, continue to cross and extend touch press out towards the passenger side also. Understanding that the threat could come from anywhere inside the vehicle, anywhere around the vehicle. If you're trapped inside the vehicle and need to use your firearm, when you practice presentation from a holster, regardless of where you carry on your body or in the car, you want to make sure that you think about not only defending yourself from that driver's side door, but also from out in front and to the right if necessary, maybe even to the rear in some extreme circumstances where you're going to actually have to come up out of the seat. You may need to release that seat belt also. You're not going to want to get anything tangled up in there as you start to move. So think about how to stay inside the vehicle, release that seat belt, get it past your body, and now you can turn around and maneuver inside the vehicle. Now, as you can see, I've put on a concealment garment because this time I've actually gone away from waist carry and put on a shoulder holster. 
Now, the fact is, when you're sitting inside of a vehicle and you're carrying on your waist, you probably, unless you're worried about concealing from people inside of the vehicle, not going to worry as much about being concealed. Now, again, local laws, regulations, your personal preference may still come into play, but the fact is, people driving by or walking by your vehicle aren't likely to see a firearm when it's on your waist, or ankle holster, pocket holster, or inside of a fanny pack, off-body carry, even a holster put in a hard point that's out of the way, underneath the dash next to the seat. But when you're wearing that shoulder holster, even if they don't see the firearm itself, they're very likely to see the straps that are coming up over your shoulder when you're sitting inside of the vehicle. And of course, they can see in through the windshield or in through the side doors at that configuration. You may not want people to know you're carrying, so this is going to be more viable if you're wearing a concealment garment. If it's 90 degrees out, you don't have air conditioning, shoulder holster probably isn't going to be the best option for you. But in case it is, you want to think about how to deploy, and it's going to be very much like the cross draw holster. At this point, we're going to recognize a threat we're going to reach across underneath of our arm. Notice that the seatbelt is still on. I've got a seatbelt coming across my chest here and a seatbelt coming across my waist. I'm actually reaching between those two areas of seatbelt to securely grab the firearm, release the retention device, which in this case is a thumb brake, pull the firearm up, keeping the firearm oriented between my body and my arm, and then turning it so that I am again parallel with my thigh as I orient towards the front maybe keep it oriented towards the driver's side or come all the way across and go again to that passenger side to go out that window. Regardless of where your threat is, again, we need to be able to present 360 degrees from that shoulder holster while seated. The shoulder holster is a very comfortable option, not quite as convenient as the cross draw holster down on the hip to draw from, but very convenient as long as you're comfortable with a concealment garment inside the vehicle seated with all the weight of that firearm resting on your shoulders instead of down by your hip. In some cars, this is going to be the most comfortable way to carry. Of course, you still need to practice to make it an efficient way to present your firearm. Let's take a look at one of the off-body carry options, the fanny pack. In this case, we've taken the fanny pack and we've actually secured it to the seat simply by throwing the strap up around the headrest. We know that this isn't going to go very far. We know where the firearm is located. Now, it's not exactly concealed. It wouldn't be convenient if we had a passenger with us, but for a quick and easy way to secure a firearm off our body inside of a vehicle, this is going to work as well as just about anything else. If we had a situation where we needed to deploy the firearm, we could reach over with our strong hand only, pull open the fanny pack at this point here where it's designed to be broken open. Again, this is set up for a left-handed deployment, which means we're going to have to move our firing hand in behind the firearm as we pull it out, come up to our ready position, either engage a threat to the strong side, in front of ourselves, in front of the vehicle, or off to the weak side. Again, crossing our body parallel with our thighs as always, tucking in and getting into our retention shooting position. Now, if we had both hands available to us, we obviously could then come across open the fanny pack with our weak hand, grab the firearm this way, come across again, avoiding covering our body. This might be a more convenient way to engage a threat if we've practiced shooting and manipulating our firearm with our weak hand. If we were over here on the strong side of our body and we were coming across to get the firearm either from this fanny pack position, from a position on the seat, or even a hard point that might be mounted elsewhere inside the vehicle. Practicing again is going to be very important. Think about whether or not this is a viable option or if some small change to this is a viable option for you and practice deploying whenever you have off-body carry inside of a vehicle with both the strong hand and the weak hand as long as your shooting skills are up to par with that weak hand at the close ranges you can expect when you need to defend yourself inside your vehicle. Check out more videos just like this one at the Personal Defense Network.